Cool. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Dan Kirkham. Um, today I want to talk about um, junior developers in the industry. I've seen a lot of sort of ethical problems come out recently. Um, do we some nods, some hands? Do we hear about this sort of Google engineer? Talk about the sort of female? Um, yeah. Okay. Some some scattered hands. Um, and if you sort of follow Troy Hunt, you see all the sort of hacks going on and companies not taking care of their information very well. Um, really, when I think about junior developers, and, and this, this problem isn't really talked about, and I, I, I think of it like a learner driver in that it's quite a, a stressful experience. You know, it's, it's difficult, it's maybe time consuming, costly. Um, so you'd think it'd be a big problem, but kind of by the time they get to the you know, the test, and once they pass that, the problem just sort of disappears and it doesn't really get talked about again. Um, um, here I've got an example um, job advert out there, so just take a second just to have a look at that. So, having a look at it, you've got a couple of server side languages going on here. You've got Java and .NET. You've got your typical uh, uh, web front end kind of stuff, HTML5, JavaScript, etc. Um, you've got some database work, um, some DevOps, so getting that code from your machine um, to, in this case, AWS or Google Cloud, so some sort of cloud platform, um, using Ansible, Puppet, Chef, or, uh, and some sort of soft skills as well down the bottom. Um, so that's actually a junior uh, developer role they've advertised for. And uh, this isn't a particularly contrived example. Is something you could find on sort of like page one, you know, and this is word for word what they were looking for uh, for a junior de developer. Looking at another example, um, down the bottom there, we've got some like typical soft skills, so nothing too special, but at the top, you've got a university degree is required. Um, that's an interesting one. It's, I, I think of it as like solutionizing what you actually want from the, the candidate. Um, really, is the, is the degree the important thing there? Um, or what is it you want out from that degree? So it's really no wonder when you see uh, this sort of diagram here, where in the, in the blue, which is just over 75%, this is the number of um, stack overflow they do a, do a sort of survey each year. This is the number of people who have a degree. Um, so that could be bachelor or, or higher. If you think about like how much that costs nowadays, like that, that's approaching 30 grand at least um, for just a bachelor one. To go further than that, that's even more. So, and obviously, three or four years of your life. So my first tip for today um, is aimed at the developers, the junior developers out there. Um, really, when we look at that first example, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of like requirements, you know, things that, they, that you absolutely must have. I really don't think you do have to have, <laughs> okay? So um, you look at that, that's two server-side languages. Um, you've got um, Java and C Sharp. Now, is it really likely that they're going to be using both those languages at the same time, or is it more likely that they've probably moved from Java to C Sharp or, or the other way, if they so care? Um, it's probably not. And also, you think about things like the, the, the Ansible and the Puppet. Those are cool things. They're great to know. Is it really important that a junior developer knows that? You know, it's, it's simply something that one person can, can learn and pick up and, um, and sort of spread that knowledge. So it's sort of like filtering out those things. Um, also, identifying the weaknesses that you have as a junior, um, things that you, you want to learn, things that you, you know you should learn, um, identifying those, especially in like a sort of cover letter. You know, think about the CV as like a fact sheet. Um, that cover letter really can express um, you know, your intentions, your, your desires, and you, you kind of explain that you, you don't know these things, but however, you, know, you spend every weekend learning about them, and you, you're going to continue doing that. And that's, it really shows that kind of commitment to the company. Uh, for the recruiters out there, um, managers, whatever, you know, people who are hiring. Um, kind of the opposite of the, the top one, just calm down the requirements list a little bit. You know, you've got to think that the word requirement is, is something you must have. Um, and really looking at this morning, actually, finding examples, you can find a few different examples out there where um, taking another survey, you see really high numbers of people turned away because of the requirements. They think they're not capable of doing all those things, so they just don't apply. When I say high numbers, it's talking like 45%. Um, just, oh, I didn't do it. I, didn't, I turned away a job. I didn't apply for it because the requirements were too high. Um, thinking about like, what you want a junior developer to be right now versus some arbitrary time in the future. 
Okay, so I call that like day one, day 30, but really whatever it works for your company. So what is it you see your, that junior developer doing day one? Setting up the machine, integrating with the team, pulling the code base down, those kind of things are pretty typical. Um, you know, maybe just playing around with some of the code, but not really like actually any production code, would be pretty sensible. Um, day 30, you know, down the line, where would you want, want them to do? You know, create a feature, um, get that into, into live with some help maybe. Um, maybe it's to do a little bug fix or something. Something like that, but if you just have a plan for what you'd want from a junior and a sort of progression, like a learning progression for them, um, I think it's going to be very helpful for, for everyone involved. Um, I'll put an example here of what I think a good job advert would look like. So the requirements are pretty, pretty minimal. It's pretty like bang on for like a kind of junior to have some, just some simple soft skills, something they can demonstrate they can work as a team. They're not going to derail your project, something you know, that they can help with and, and really some basic proficiency in the language that you, you're working with. So if that's C sharp, you know, just they can write some code. You know, you, you obviously don't want them coming in day one knowing nothing and just sapping sort of time from the team to learn skills that they really should know. Um, and what I don't see a lot of is listing what the company wants to do, like going forward. Um, so you've probably all seen the kind of job advert out there where you see a stereotype would be like something like .NET uh, SQL using NT framework and then some generic blah blah description about a company. It's just it's so boring, you don't really engage with that. A lot of people just skip by that and just not think about anything because it's just not engaging companies to work for, really. Um, so why don't you identify you know, things that you want to be doing as a company? Um, maybe you've heard some talk about Docker and you, you think that it might apply to your company but you haven't had the time to invest in it. Why don't you say that on the advert that you know, this is what we want to be doing? Or we want to do some cloud-based stuff or whatever it is you want to be doing. If you, if you put that in the advert, people are going to think, all right, well, maybe it's, it's boring now, but it can be some great stuff down the line. Or maybe I don't know all these requirements. However, I do know a bit of this stuff. And that's going to sort of help them out and help you out. My second tip is to not be a model employee, which sounds kind of crazy. Um, but when I think about this, it's, it's if you stack all your team with the same skills, you know, if you think maybe you've, you, you do lots of Java and Oracle. And that's great, and that might work for your company. But inevitably, like, as you go down, that, that technology is going to change, and you're going to be stuck with a lot of people who, do, who have great skills in a certain thing, um, but not applicable to the company. You're going to be quite brittle to change, which, which is kind of you can't control. Um, so thinking about how, as a, as a junior developer, you can sort of change this, is, is uh, you're always going to look up to someone who's got you know, the senior developers who've got these skills. You maybe focus on um, learning some of those, but at the same time, learning something in your own time, something that's going to help you um, or help the company move forward. Um, <clears throat> this is only kind of my, my very simplistic view of what programming was when I was very young. Uh, there's some software, there's some websites, and there's some sort of games development going on. Um, if we actually like sort of dig into maybe the, the website stuff, uh, Actually, you kind of see, well, it kind of breaks up. You've got HTML, JavaScript, and you've got to worry about what browsers support. Uh, and you just take the JavaScript element of that, and it kind of explodes even more now. And you've got frameworks to worry about, and languages, and transpilers, and all kinds of stuff. So and my point here is that there is way too much in software development. It's just it's too much to take in at once. And just like buying a new house, when you want to go in and uh, you know, this room needs painting, and this, this garden, I don't like it, and the kitchen, I, I wish I could change the worktops. There's going to be so many things you're going to want to do, but you need to keep like a prioritized list of w what you should be doing, uh, what's, what's sensible to, to do now, um, and sensible to do in the future. If you prioritize that, and just forget about the, the things that don't matter to you. It's going to be this, <laughs> very similar to software industry and development. You know, there's, there's just too much to learn, so you've got to be realistic about what you can achieve. Um, so, to keep a week plan is a great idea. It's, it's something that you, um, you're going to do nine to five, Monday to Friday, and it's going to help the company. It's going to further the company and their skills. So if, if, you know, if it's something, uh, maybe that's you and developer, you know a bit of C sharp, but you want to, you know, they want to use um, NT framework. So maybe learn that in, in the sort of, uh, during the, um, the working hours. Uh, keeping a weekend plan is something you do outside of work, and that's something that's not, relevant to the company. It's something that's relevant to you and, and the industry as a whole. Um, 
So maybe the company just does on-premise stuff. So maybe you should look at getting something into Azure uh, and work that out. Because kind of inevitably, you're going to move around a little bit. The company is going to change over time. So all these kind of things are going to happen. Um, and there's no point just learning this sort of same stuff, learning what the company wants. So learn something that's going to help you as a developer. My uh, <laughs> last point, let's be realistic about it. You know, it's, it's it, like I said, there's, there's too much to learn. Um, you look at the experts who focus on a very narrow category. Um, maybe that's security or something. You know, it, it's a very granular thing they can focus on. They can spend their whole life doing it, and they're still not the best at it. They're still not perfect, and you know they've had to sacrifice time from other areas. So you need to be realistic about what you can do. If you want to be a full stack developer, that's your goal. Then yeah, you have to learn sort of the the main things, but you have to ignore others as well. So. That's pretty much it for me. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, feedback at my Twitter here. Um, you can mail, sort of message me, tweet me. Um, I'd really, really love to see people go away, um, perhaps think about their, their, their adverts out there um, and uh, the kind of, you know, impact they've had. A quick show of hands, like how many are like mid developers up? Okay, so reasonable number, reasonable number. Um, I actually think like, the normal developers and even like managers, like even if you're not directly responsible for putting that job advert together, um, you really are like the content that's going in there, that requirements like section that we all saw on the first page is because you've driven the company to, to do these things. It's your direction your, and everyone's involvement to make these things. Um, and it, I guess the, the onus does fall on developers, not just, oh, I'd put the advert together. So yeah, I'd love to see people sort of go away and um, just message me and say, you know, this, hopefully this is, this is better and this is new. So thank you very much for listening. Um, yeah, thank you.